Hiya, babe. Say how about... Ouch. Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcement. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. For a while I thought maybe, perhaps there was a chance it would be changed to Maisie Jordan. But my boyfriend, Eddie, well, ever since he's been old enough to hold a steady job, he hasn't. It's not that Eddie's lazy, but you see, he went to college and studied stuff like 14th century Flemish poetry. The art of rug weaving amongst the natives of Abyssinia and all that stuff there ain't a buck in. Eddie barely makes enough money to pay his room rent, so we stay home a lot. Also, we, uh, both room in the same boarding house and, oh gosh, it must be awful late. I'd better run up to Eddie's room and wake him up or he'll be late for work. Eddie? Eddie? Who's there? It's Maisie, Eddie. You told me last night to make sure to wake you up at 6.30. You remember? Hmm. What time is it now? I don't know. I don't have a watch. What time have you got? Maisie, how can I sleep with all that noise? That's what I can never understand. That loud snoring would wake anybody up. Maisie, would you please go away and let me be? I've got, uh, i got 28 minutes yet before I have to give my all to Bixel's department store. Men's accessories department. I know. And I thought I'd give you a little extra time to relax before work if I brought you a little coffee. <sighs> okay, thanks. Uh, just pour it under the door. But, Eddie, if... Oh, well, I might as well get up now. I can't sleep anyway. Good. Slip on something and let me in. Sure, sure. Oh! Ooh. Eddie, what happened? I slipped on something. Okay, you can come on in now. Good morning, Eddie, darling. Oh, it's a beautiful morning. Look, the sun is shining. (laughs) Maisie, that's the moon. Oh. Say, uh, what's that gray stuff? Your coffee. Oh. You'd sure make a wonderful wife. Oh, Eddie, this is so sudden. Let's get married real soon. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, how soon, for instance? Well, I hate to rush you, but would after lunch be too soon? Maisie, you know we can't get married on what I make at the store. As a matter of fact, I'm not so sure Bixel's department store feels that I'm exactly indispensable to the merchandising world. Eddie, they haven't said anything. You haven't been shooting spitballs at the floor walker with brand new imported French men's garters again, have you? You promised me faithfully you'd be the perfect salesman. It's not that, Maisie. It's just those I'm not buying. I'm just looking. Those kind of customers that I've been getting. Maisie, I, I just don't like morons. Eddie Jordan, if you don't like morons, you don't like me. Huh? I mean, if, if, you, if you can't try to make a living, then I don't mean enough to you. But you do, Maisie. You're the most wonderful, marvelous, gorgeous, most beautiful... I'm not listening to a word you say. Maisie, don't interrupt. Now, well, let's see, where was I? Most beautiful. Oh, yes, the most beautiful girl in the world. But you deserve better than me. You deserve a real man. I don't want a real man. I want you. You could be a success, too, Eddie. You'd only put your shoulder to the wheel instead of your head. Maisie, I want to talk to you. It's it's very important for both of us, but first I have to get dressed. Okay, get dressed. And I'll wait for you down the parlor. Good. And while you're down there, ask Mrs. Kennedy to make out my board bill for this week. Oh, paying your board bill, there must be something wrong. Eddie, what's this all about? Well, I'll be down in ten minutes and tell you, Maisie. Meanwhile, if you don't mind, I have to shower, shave, and polish my shoes. Polish your shoes? Eddie Jordan, have you met a new girl? 
So long, Maisie. I'll see you downstairs in ten minutes. And that's what Eddie said, Mrs. Kennedy. What do you think this mystery's all about? Well, that's hard to say, Maisie, honey. When any of my boarders want to pay their bill before I threaten to turn off the lights in their room a few times, there must be something wrong. Oh, gosh, Mrs. Kennedy. Do you think maybe Eddie's lost interest in me? Well, Maisie, it could be another girl. After all, Eddie's a man. Yeah? I said he's a man. Oh, I know, Mrs. Kennedy, but there are men and there are men. Eddie's different. Yeah, different. Hmm. A new face, a snazzy figure means absolutely nothing to him. Yeah. Means absolutely nothing to him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, honey, that's that. What game shall we play now? Mrs. Kennedy, I happen to trust Eddie implicitly. Nothing you could say would make me believe that he's interested in another girl. No. No. Any idea who she may be, Mrs. Kennedy? Oh, Maisie, forget it. There's nobody else in Eddie's life. And if there were, he'd tell you about it. Yeah. Well, that's that. Now, what other game shall we play? Games? Who's playing games? Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Kennedy and me, we were just playing, um, canasta. Without cards? Well, yes. You see, we're both just learning it, and we're not good enough at it to play with cards. <laughs> uh, Maisie, I'd like to talk. No. Oh, good. I've been just dying to find out what this is all about. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy, this is uh, sort of private. Yeah, Mrs. Kennedy. Uh, I, I think your coffee's about to bubble over in the kitchen. Oh, yes. Don't you think you ought to watch it? What for? I've seen coffee bubbling over lots of times. It comes up in the... Po oh, yes, yes. Well, I'll, <clears throat> I'll go into the kitchen. Uh, bye, kitties. And if you happen to talk real loud, I thank you. Well, Eddie... Oh, uh, you mean the talk? Yeah, the talk. We're alone now. Nobody can hear us. What? She said nobody can hear you. Oh, uh, thanks. You're welcome. You might as well come back in, Mrs. Kennedy. I don't like to strain my voice. Oh, uh -huh. well, if you insist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maisie, honey, I'm not fit for this store salesman work. It, it, well, it doesn't do anything to me inside. Except feed it. But this is a salesman's job. I I just can't sell things. Well, you sold me, honey, and I don't buy easily. You got everything to make you a success, Eddie. You're cultured and you're cultured. Yeah, what else? Well, you, you write beautiful love letters. Yes, but it so happens you can't make money writing love letters. I had a girlfriend who did. She sold them back to the banker who wrote them. Maisie, honey, I've made up my mind. I finished work at the store tonight. And then this little piggy is going far, far away to seek his fortune. Going away, Eddie? Any place in particular, Rover Boy, or are you just going to ad-lib it? Well, gee, Eddie, I, I don't want to hold you back from anything you really want to do, but where do you plan to go? Well, Horace Greeley said go west. Eddie Jordan, have you been talking to strange men in bars again? Maisie, Horace Greeley is an old newspaper man. Oh. <laughs> he died quite some time ago. Probably from starvation. There's no money in old newspapers. I wouldn't know. You know something? Maybe I'll get a job in a ranch and be a cowboy. Oh, that's silly, Eddie. You can't be a cowboy. You don't even play a guitar. I'll take lessons. Yes, sir, I think I'll really enjoy being a cowboy. I can see myself now milking a cow in a ten-gallon hat. You mean instead of in a pail? Oh, don't be so silly, Mrs. K. And don't you be silly, Eddie. You don't know how to milk a cow. Well, you don't even know where it keeps its crankcase. Look, honey, I have to do something to make a living. I have to eat, you know. Yep, and you might as well start with some breakfast. Nobody can make a real good fool of himself on an empty stomach. I'll fix you some grub, Tex. Gee, I'm sorry to be letting you down like this, Maisie, but... Well, I gotta latch onto something with a future... I'll never get rich selling men's socks. But, Eddie, you just gotta stick to something. You just can't go roaming around the country trying to earn a buck. Why not? You do it, don't you? But it's different in my case. I'm a woman. So what? There's no difference between men and women. There must be, or they wouldn't have special nights for each at Turkish baths. Oh, don't be corny. And don't you be so stubborn. I'm giving you good advice. You don't want to spend the rest of your life being a flop, do you? Oh, so I'm a flop. Yeah, but in a nice way. Yeah. 
So long, Maisie. Where you going, Eddie? To work. But you haven't eaten your breakfast. I might as well get used to going without breakfast. Oh. Well, here it is, Eddie. A nice hot dish of oatmeal. Where did Eddie go, Maisie? To work. He wasn't hungry. Something was bothering him. What something was bothering him? Me. Good, good morning, Maisie. Good, good morning, Mrs. Kennedy. Good morning, Merton. Good morning, Merton. Uh, well, what's wrong, Maisie? Have a fight with Eddie? No, thanks. I just had one. Eat your breakfast, Mr. Sunshine. Got a special today. You got your choice of oatmeal. What's the choice? Take it or leave it. Oh. Maisie, honey, you aren't eating. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. K. I'm not hungry. Every time I think of poor Eddie, I get a lump in my throat. Every time I eat Mrs. Kennedy's oatmeal, I get a lump in mine. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, well, I just cracked that joke to cheer you folks up, folks. Save your comedy for Mr. Jordan Mert. He's the one that needs cheering up. Gil, things ain't from breaking good for Ed. Um, how's about a slice of toast, Mrs. K? Sure, Mert. What kind? White or whole wheat? No, it makes no difference. I want to put it under the leg of the chair. I got the wobbly one again this morning. Here, Merton, you can have my chair. I'm finished. Okay. Oh, but Maisie, honey, you got to eat something. I'm not hungry anymore, ever since Eddie said he's going to quit his job. Who's going to quit? Mm. Right in the middle of the contest? Contest? What contest? Mm. Oh, haven't you heard? Heard what? Hmm. And he didn't tell you. Who didn't tell me? Oh, Eddie. Mm. Gee, Miss Kelly. Hey, this jam is good. Oh, for goodness sake, Merton, what is it? Strawberry, I think. I mean the contest. Yeah, oh. what's it about? What happens? Take the spoon out of your cup while you're drinking your coffee. And what has it to do with Eddie? Uh, huh? Oh, oh, well, you see, the store is having a contest and giving prizes for the one who wins. Wins what? The contest. Merton, stop talking so much and saying so little. Yeah, you're an elevator operator, not a politician. Now, the salesman and the sales lady who sell the most stuff by closing time tonight wins a $500 prize. Say, they've got about 200 salespeople. Oh, yeah. I guess that's why Eddie's so discouraged. He's probably close to the bottom in the amount of sales made so far. Uh uh. He ain't close to the bottom. He isn't? He isn't? Nope. He's at the bottom. Oh. Uh, well, there's one good thing about it he can't go any lower. Hmm. Well, Maisie, honey. I can't very well blame Eddie for not telling you. The contest was the final straw that decided him on quitting the store. The poor boy was ashamed to be in such an awful flop with his order book. Yeah, poor Eddie. He's such a helpless little schnook. I guess the only person he's ever been able to sell was me. You know, what that boy really needs is for something to happen to give him faith in himself. Yeah. Like maybe by some miracle winning that prize at the store. Mm. Yeah, if he only had imagination like Henry Carter, he'd stand a chance. Who's Henry Carter? He's in ladies' girdles. I hope the dear boy finds them comfortable. I don't. Don't, don't you? Oh, I mean, he sells them. Henry's lead man in the contest so far. And you know, the funny thing about it is that most of his customers are men. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. Most men are just interested in what goes into the girdles. That's how Henry sells them. With mm-hmm. women already in them? Say, that store carries everything, doesn't it? No, let me finish. You see, Henry sells all those girdles to men by demonstrating how funny their wives look when they're struggling into one. Oh, say, that's showmanship. Yes. <laughs> now, imagine Henry winning that contest because of a simple little idea like that. Yeah. He's going to win 500 bucks just because he found something new that appealed to men. I've got it. Got what? What? Well, it ain't new, but it's appealed to men before laughs. Women. Women. Yeah, Mrs. Kennedy. You've heard of bazaars where men kiss women for charity. Oh, yeah. Well, what I mean is that Eddie could maybe win that selling contest if he had an idea behind it. Well, I'm that idea. I'm giving out kisses today at Vixel's department store. Uh, I don't get it. You will if you buy a pair of socks. Pair of socks? Yeah, that's it. And I've got a slogan. Buy a sock from Eddie and get a snack from Maisie. What do you think? I think it's worth a try, Maisie. Gosh, imagine kissing all those men. Uh, I don't like it. How do you know? Have you ever kissed any men? I, I mean, well, Eddie wouldn't like his girlfriend kissing strange men so as he could be a success. Oh, that's silly. Look in the movies. 
stars with husbands and families kiss Jimmy Stewart and Van Johnson, don't they? Doesn't mean anything. It's a living. Yeah. And if that ain't living, I don't know what is. Mm. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right, Maisie. Good. Then, you, then you'll help me, Merton? Help you? Oh, God. gosh, I don't think a man would want to kiss me. Especially when I need a shave. No, no. I mean, let me use your elevator as a sort of a display case. My elevator? You mean you... you yeah, want... and if you do, I won't forget Now, you. don't say no, Merton. Say you'll do it. Oh. Oh. Okay, Miss Kenny. Okay, I'll do it. More jam, please. No, no, no. Not like that, Merton. Look me in the face and say you'll do it. Come on now. Look me in the face. Please, Mrs. Kennedy, not while I'm eating. <laughs> Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. Gentlemen, from Mr. Jordan, Miss Revere here will give the buyer a kiss. Uh -huh. A kiss? From this doll here? Well, let's get a better look at you, baby. Uh-uh, chum. Please don't handle the merchandise. Oh, wow, I'm sold. Yeah, me too, baby. Ninth floor boy. Roger. <laughs> Take him away, Mert. Just show your sales receipts, gentlemen, and collect your kiss here on the main floor. Yeah, yeah, and remember, gentlemen, for $5 worth of merchandise bought from Eddie Jordan... You kiss me. For $10 worth of sales... I sort of help a little. And for $20? Uh, for 20 bucks, mister, all you do is hold on. Oh, wow! Here goes the savings of a lifetime. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go, gentlemen. Get 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 M for Maisie Flight, now taking off. Over. <laughs> Let go, I saw these shorts first. I saw them first. Let go! Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, you just turned those shorts in half. Good. Wrap my half clerk. Here's your money. You never mind wrapping my half clerk. I'll take them like they are. Uh, clerk, I'll take these socks. Okay, but first put my shoes back on. Those socks were mine. Well, they're mine now. Here's your money. Well, aren't you going to wait for your change, mister? You, you've got something coming to you. You ain't kidding, friend. My lips are all puckered up for it. Say, I don't get this. I must have sold $10,000 worth of merchandise. Never mind the gab, of... Clark. Here's your dough. I'm taking these bedroom slippers. Thirty pairs of bedroom slippers, mister? All right, so I'm a centipede. Now, out of my way. I'm in a hurry. Everybody's in a hurry. What's the rush Wrap for... this up for me, will you, Clark? Wrap this? But it's just a sign that says marked down to three ninety-eight. Yeah, okay, here's four bucks. Keep the change. I'm in a hurry. Say, somebody answer me, please. Why am I the only salesman on this floor that's doing a land office business? I don't know, Jordan. It's phenomenal, but it's phenomenal. Oh, hello, Mr. Grun. I think you'd better get them to send some more merchandise up here. The only thing that hasn't been bought is the counter itself. Say, Clark, that wouldn't be for sale. No, mister, the counter is not for sale. Oh, uh, no. Or is it, Mr. Grun? Oh, hardly, Joe, oh, but hardly. Oh, my word, Jordan, in all my years as floor walker here at Pixels, I've never seen merchandise move so fast. Why, it's fantastic. Oh, it's but it's fantastic. Now, keep this up, Jordan, and you'll outsell Henry Carter. Gee, and win that 500-buck prize with one day of sales. Hey, hey. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Grunt. Uh, what can I sell you today, sir? <laughs> what have you got? Well, I'll take I've it. Got... Hit you don't. Fight. Come on. <laughs> now, there's a fellow with sales resistance, Mr. Grunt. Amazing, Joe, but it's me. How'd you do it? Oh, isn't hard, Mr. Grunt. You see, I learned the real art of salesmanship at college. The... Now, the salesmen here at the store just don't seem to have, well, uh, my flair for merchandise. I'm taking these socks, clerk. Sure. Just put the money in my pocket. I'm tired. You're not too tired to see Mr. Bixler, I hope, Jordan. The uh, owner of the store wants to see me? I say, clerk. Uh, uh, clerk, why go, would I go away, boy. You bother me. Oh, Jennifer. Go on. Get away. 
<clears throat> well, I believe I can let Mr. Bixell have a few minutes of my time, Grun, my boy. Oh, that's good of you, Mr. Jordan. Mr. Bixell wants to see you down at his office at once. At once? Well, that is, if you can spare the time. <laughs> I believe Mr. Bixell is so impressed with your phenomenal sales methods that he's uh, considering promoting you to sales manager. <laughs> Wise move on the old man's part. Well, I can make a feeble effort to hold down the fort until you return from Mr. Say, Bixell. how much are those? Well, I'll take are... them so long. Well, not bad, Mr. Grun. You learn real fast. Well, I'm off to see the old man. <laughs> No checky, no kissy. <laughs> Here's mine. Thank you. Next, please. <laughs> Here's mine. Thank you. Next. Hey, that was only a kiss on the forehead. Well, after all, you only spent a dollar. You come up a little, mister, and I'll come down a little. <laughs> <laughs> Next, please. Uh, here, missy, I bought $80 worth of merchandise. Oh, well, that's nice work, Grandpa. <laughs> Hold him up, Mert. Roger. Uh, Here goes my white whiskered friend. Smile now, please, so as I can locate your lips. Hey, what goes on here? Hey, let me through. I'm sorry, mister. You gotta wait your turn. Mr. Bixell. Young man, I asked you a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bixell. I'm being buzzed. Passengers, you know. I didn't hear any buzzer. Well, I never wait till the last minute. Well, there you are, Grandpa. Oh. Next, please. Yeah, miss, I'd like... Get in line, mister. They'd all like to. Yeah, I'd like to know what this is all about. Well, at your age, you should already know what it's all about. Miss, yes. I did... Oh, the impatient kind. Okay, where's your sales check? Your sales check? No sales check, no kisses. Next. Miss, do you know who I am? I don't care if you're old chowderhead Bixel himself. No slips, no lips. Next. Bixel is a chowder head. But he's got to be not to recognize a great ability like my boyfriend. Miss, do you know who I am? I'm Chowderhead Bixel. I don't care if you're... You're Chowderhead? Well, you know who my boyfriend is? No. Thank goodness. Come with me, miss. I'd like to see you in my office. Uh, office, huh? Well, it's so long, fellas. Oh, 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 but here, I'll blow you all a kiss. Oh, 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 Let me get this straight, Miss Revere. Giving out kisses for sale. Oh, that's right, Mr. Bixel. Eddie needed to win that prize to give him courage and self-assurance. So while he was carrying on for dear old Bixel's on the ninth floor... You were carrying on on the main floor. Um, well, um, you're not going to keep Eddie from winning the contest, are you? You're not going to fire him, are you, huh? Are you? Is this selling merchandise with kisses, Miss Revere? Whose idea was it? Well, Mr. Bixel, I kind of thought it was a crazy idea. Well, I think it's marvelous. Oh, so did Eddie. When that boy gets an idea that he thinks is great, he sticks to it. Hey, Jordan thought up this sensational merchandising stunt. Uh-huh. That's rather difficult to believe. Yeah, ain't it? I mean, you've underestimated Eddie. He's got brains. Well, I never noticed it. Well, that's because they're so hard to see. They're inside his head. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I couldn't think of a more convenient place for them. Well, Eddie has lots more great ideas for selling stuff, Mr. Bixel. Uh, Miss Revere, I have practically decided to make Jordan our new sales manager. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Bixel. I'm so happy I could kiss you. Well, Miss Revere, why don't you? But, uh, uh, Jordan but... hasn't sold out everything in the store. I can still buy something from him if you'll accept the sales stuff later. Oh, you don't have to, Mr. Bixel. This is on the house. Come in. I was told that you wanted to see me, Mr. Bush. Maisie. Hello, Eddie. You know you've got the lovers boss. Oh, you're a lucky chap, Jordan, having a girl who thinks so much of you. Maisie, I never thought you could do a thing like this. But it's done now, Eddie, and now you're the new salesman. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are, Jordan. If I had any doubts before, this lovely girl has convinced me. Obviously, you old Rue. What? You're... Eddie, you're making a big mistake. You're the one that's making the mistake, you... you... you vamp. Vamp? 
If the only way I can get ahead is for my girl to play up to the boss in that disgusting manner, then I don't want to get ahead. Jordan, how dare you? Eddie, don't spoil everything. You've just gotten a big executive job. You don't have to punch clocks anymore. No. I've got something I'd enjoy punching very much more. Jordan, stand back. I'm warning you. Eddie, don't, Eddie. Oh, Eddie. Well... Just don't stand there, Maisie. Help me up. And out, Miss Revere. He's fired. Get your time and don't come back. I don't want my money. Well, you better take it, Eddie. You're going to need beefsteaks for both those black eyes when we get home. Both? I only have one black eye. I know. But we're not home yet. <laughs> Just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, poor Eddie. He's still suffering from the foot and mouth disease. Every time he opens his mouth, he puts his foot in it. Frankly, I couldn't blame Eddie for being amazed at what he saw in Mr. Bixell's office. He had a perfect right. Too bad Mr. Bixell had a perfect left. But Eddie was unreasonable about not listening to my explanation. I know if I caught Eddie kissing a strange girl, I'd listen to his reason first before I'd call him a liar. I know I may sound cynical, but I've been around a lot, and I can always tell when a man is lying. If his lips are moving, he's lying. <laughs> Funny thing, though, I'm not really mad at Eddie for making that big blunder. At least he showed that he really loved me. And to a woman, love is the most valuable commodity turned out by a man. Well, I better get down to the butchers and buy that beefsteak for Eddie. Hmm. I wonder if there's a special cut for black eyes. <laughs> Just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included B. Benaderet, Frank Nelson, Howard McNear, Pat McGeehan, Peter Leeds, and Sidney Miller. Jack McCoy speaking. (laughs) 